Is it fun? That's what everybody asks us when we tell them we designed a board game. Which sucks, because fun is a really dumb word. It can mean this. Or this. Or this. Or this. All right, I, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Trust me, it was fun. All right. What's not fun, at least not inherently, is moving wooden bits around a board. So the challenge of board game design is turning this into this. Now, people have been doing this for hundreds of years. Thousands. All right, but in the last 20 years or so, the way we talk about it has undergone a fundamental shift. See, there was a time in this country when board games were mostly mass-produced confections for kids. Roll a dice, move a guy, see what happens. Woo! <laughs> but then something started changing. We started seeing, first in Germany, then spreading to the U.S., an explosion of these beautiful, elegant strategy games aimed at adults. And they did something really important, which is they put the designers' names on the box. <laughs> it's funny, but it did change everything. The thing is, you put the designers' name on the box, and suddenly, games are art. It's not just a pastime anymore. It's something you want to play a lot of and discuss the merits of, like you would a book or a movie. And so what we start seeing is, more than ever before, a subculture sprouts up of board game hobbyists. And within that, a sub-subculture of board game design hobbyists. There are proto-spiel meetups all over the country where designers just get together and play their unpublished prototypes. On a local level, we get together every month with dozens of other designers at the Cambridge Innovation Center to work on our prototypes and share ideas. And all of us are talking very seriously about what works. What doesn't. What, what is fun. fun. So some obvious ideas come up pretty quick. Like, don't eliminate players. <laughs> because nobody likes to just sit around watching their friends play a game. Reduce downtime. Because nobody wants to wait for the dice to go around the table so they can take their turn. Balance your strategies. It's not fun to do the same thing over and over and over again. And reduce the roll of luck. Because who wants to lose a three-hour board game just because of a bad die roll? No one in history, we're sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's all well and good, but none of it answers the question, what is fun? Now, we all use the word. But we're just kind of supposed to know it when we see it. All right, so we know it when we see it. Let's go back and take a look at some of the things we know are fun. What do? A roller coaster ride. A party. A chess tournament. All right, seriously, what is this? <laughs> Let's just forget about this one. All right, but this other stuff. What does it all have in common? Well, they're all kind of the moments where you set aside your day-to-day -day life and become completely consumed with the joy of what you're doing. To put it another way, fun is enthusiastic engagement. It's not just any positive emotion. It has to grab you and make you a part of it. So, okay, when you strap yourself into a roller coaster, how does it engage you? It starts by cranking you up that hill, and the whole time you're watching the ground get further and further away, thinking about that drop you're about to take, it engages you with suspense. Now, we can put suspense in a board game, maybe by having you pick a card, and then waiting an agonizing turn to see if it was the right one. It engages you by thrilling you, drops you down insane hills, spins you upside down, makes you do things you would never do in any other situation that your body instinctively believes are dangerous. Now, believe it or not, we can actually thrill you in a board game by letting you take risks, letting you take big tactical gambles that are so crazy you would never take them in real life that actually get your heart rate pumping. So let's look at a party. At a party, other people engage you. <laughs> You try to make them laugh, they make you laugh, you impress each other. It's social fun. In a game, we can give you reasons to interact with people in ways you ordinarily wouldn't. Like, maybe you need something from an opponent, and you have to negotiate or trade to get it. Like in uh, Settlers of Catan, or Monopoly, or Diplomacy. Or maybe the game itself generates things to laugh or talk about, like apples to apples, or even charades. Sure. All right, let's take a look at that chess game. Chess engages you because it's challenging. It puts a difficult task before you and dares you to figure it out. Makes you match wits with the guy across the table. Games can't do that one. No, clearly. 
No, actually games are very good at this. There's a topic uh, that designers throw around called flow, which is the rush of pleasure you get when you're totally consumed with a task that is just difficult enough. And then there's Firo, the thrill of accomplishing something after overcoming just enough obstacles. So our job as board game designers is to make sure our game is packed with tons of these true, difficult, actual challenging decisions. And we do this through tension. We want to make sure every time you choose something, you're giving up something else. Let's imagine a game where your only goal was to get to the end the fastest. <laughs> Candyland is that game. There's no decision making. Every turn, you just draw a card and move as far as you possibly can, no matter what. Pretty boring if you're not four. But now let's imagine you get a bonus for getting to the end faster, but your actual goal is to collect the most candy along the way. Ah, now there's an inherent tension, because the quicker you get to the end, the fewer turns you had to collect that sweet, sweet candy along the way. Mm. And, but you still want to get the end fast because the bonus. Correct. Now let's imagine you're trying to collect specific kinds of candy and you can trade with your opponents to get the ones you need. Now it's got social fun because you're bargaining and trading. And every time you bargain, it's tense because you're helping the guy you're trying to beat when you do it. And that's key because any time you can make the tension in your game revolve around the guy across the table, you've done something essential. You've turned a cardboard puzzle into a shared experience, a reason to gather around a table instead of a TV. I think it goes without saying that in this version of Candyland, you probably get to pick which card you play. Oh yeah, we'd probably have like a draft board or something. Oh yeah, that's perfect, because then you have to wait and see what your opponent's gonna take. Which is suspense, and, and we could do this all day. <laughs> but let's get back to the original question of how we turn all these lovely game bits into all this great fun stuff. Usually, we'll start with an idea, and it can be anything. It could be based on a world or a story. Or a neat thing you can do with dice. And out of that, we pick out the central conflict. The tension that unites you and your opponent in a shared struggle where everything you take is something you give up. Then, we fill it with all these other ideas that we have. Some of them are inspired by the theme. And some because we think they'll balance the game or add more suspense or social interaction or cool things to achieve. And after we've packed it with all these awesome things, we slim it back down, make it as lean and mean as possible, calibrate each and every decision, and then we test it. And usually, it doesn't work at all. <laughs> so we tweak it, and then we test it some more, and we tweak it, and we test it, and you, you get the idea. And if we do it right, it'll eventually stop being just a bunch of bits and cardboard and become something you want to interact with that consumes you. Enthusiastically engages you. You know. Fun. All right, so what does all this stuff have that makes it different than what other people have been doing for hundreds, nay, thousands of years? Well, like any other kind of technology, we've just gotten better at it. Think about what's happening here. Every time we design a game, that's a hypothesis. We suspect this is fun. And when we test it, that's the experiment. Was it fun? No. All right, why not? And because all you need to design one, to test one of these games is some index cards, markers, and poker chips, we can run a lot of these tests. And we do. But perhaps even more important than that, it means that anyone can do this. You could go home right now, not listen to the rest of our talk or any other talks, <laughs> grab your index cards, markers, poker chips, what have you, and put your game on the table. And because of websites like Board Game Geek, Story Games, and even Twitter, you can find game designers out there doing the exact same thing and actually talk about it. We don't have to design in a vacuum anymore. We can talk to our players and each other in ways the guys who designed Trivial Pursuit never could. And because we're all building on each other's ideas, it feels a positive feedback loop of innovation. Quick example. 2008, Donald X. Vecarino comes up with Dominion. Sets the world on fire, a whole new kind of game where you build a deck as you play. It's totally sweet. Take it and run with it. <laughs> And you get something like Thunderstone, which says, we like this deck building thing, but wouldn't it be even better if we could use these decks to kill some monsters? Or Ascension, which tried to broaden the experience by showing you a greater variety of cards each game. Or Quarriers, which says, we like deck building, but screw cards, we're gonna do the same thing, but with dice. Or our own upcoming Gladiators, which makes deck building just a part of a much bigger fighting and betting game designed to add more suspense and thrills to the experience. And who knows, maybe someone's gonna play this, like what they see, and build on those ideas. 
or they'll think it sucks. Either way, we'll have gotten a result, and we'll have added something to this collage. We'll have learned just a little bit more about what makes us tick. What gets us thinking. What brings us joy. What engages us. What, what is, is fun. fun.